Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Did you know that baseball is mentioned in the Bible? This is one of these old preacher jokes. It's there in the first, uh, first chapter of Genesis as well as in the first chapter of John as they both begin with the same words, in the big inning. You have beginnings of baseball games. You know you're at the beginning of a baseball game when they say play ball. You know you're at the beginning of a hockey game when they drop the puck at center ice at the beginning, right? You know you're at the beginning of a football game when they, coin, they toss the coin and then they kick off. Everything has a beginning. Well, not God, of course. God is eternal. He has no beginning and no ending. But everything else has a beginning. The world began when God spoke everything into existence with just his word in the first six days of the world of creation. Of course, man and woman would be a little bit different, but everything that you can see had a beginning. Human life begins at conception, no matter what pro-abortionists try to force upon us. And I always thought it was kind of strange that we hear about how a child that is in the womb, it's okay to abort that child, but when a pregnant woman is murdered, the killer is charged with two homicides. It's a little bit of a schizophrenic type of thing going on in our society where we're still not quite sure where we should go as a culture, but as a Christian church, we know exactly that human life begins at conception and is sacred to God. The plan of our salvation had a beginning. It began shortly thereafter, not even a couple minutes after Adam and Eve fell into sin. God put the plan into action. Genesis 3, 15. The Christmas season also has a beginning. Now I know we're not actually in Christmas just yet. Christmas doesn't actually begin until sundown on Christmas Eve. And then we get into Christmas time, that two weeks or actually 12 days of Christmas. But when we get talk about the Christmas season, at our house anyway, we talk about Advent and Christmas as something that go together. And for us in the Blonsky household, Christmas season begins the evening of Thanksgiving. After the Thanksgiving meal is done, then we start to prepare and anticipate for Christmas time coming. It's a whole month, but we start to get ready. And I think it might have something to do with the parades in our tradition. Because what's at the end of the Macy's Parade, or even at the Chicago Parade, or at least it used to be in the Chicago Parade, but Macy's Parade, what's the last float? It's Santa Claus. And so then you have a Thanksgiving parade until that last float, and then it's Christmas time. Now that may be a marketing tool, I don't know. But that's how it works at our house. We are thankful that we have all this time because Christmas is a, such a wonderful time of year that we want to start as soon as possible. Everything, other than God, has a beginning. Mark's Gospel, we read the beginning of it today, chapter 1, verse 1, and you hear these words, the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ the Son of God. Now, when I hear the beginning of the gospel, I right away think of how we remember the gospel so that we can share the gospel. Number one is Jesus was born to be our substitute under God's law. He lived the perfect life to be our righteousness by faith. He died on a cross to save us from all our sins, and he rose from the dead so that we too will rise from the grave one day, and he ascended into heaven with the promise that he will come back and take us to be with him in heaven forever. That's our way here of explaining the gospel so that we can tell other people. All we have to do is remember our hands, and then it starts with one, the birth of Jesus. Now, Mark's gospel actually begins with those words, the beginning of the gospel, where right away then he goes to John the Baptist. And John the Baptist 
points out that we all need to repent. There's our beginning in all of this. He calls us to repent, and as I said in the introduction, repent means to turn away. And in John, what John is telling us, and what the Bible is telling us, is we turn away from our sins, from our sinful way of living. We are all sinners. We are conceived and born sinful creatures, lost and condemned by God to an eternity separated from Him in hell. But, that's the justice of God. The love of God says, I will do something about that for you because you can't do anything on your own. Remember, you're lost. I will find you through the blood of my son, Jesus Christ. And so, he sends Jesus to be our Savior from sin, from death, and from the power of the devil. And Mark's gospel begins here with the repentance called for by John the Baptist. But actually, that's later in the story. As we are remembering now in the season of Advent, the beginning we are most focused on now is not actually the life of Jesus, but the birth of Jesus Christ. In just a little over two weeks, we will be celebrating the nativity of our Lord. That is the birth of of our Lord. We could even say, if you want to impress your friends and neighbors, the incarnation of our Lord. That's God putting skin on and becoming a human being incarnate to literally put flesh on to save us from our sins. And so we are focused on the beginning, the birth of Jesus right now. We are in the midst of our Sunday School and Confirmation service. Uh, for, our, for their our children to lead that service, that will be tomorrow morning at 1045. The kids have been working so hard. The teachers are so exhausted. But they're all so excited, and they're going to do a wonderful job of telling us the story about how Jesus came from heaven above to earth to save us from our sins. We have our Lutheran Day School children's service coming up in a week from Wednesday, a week and a half. And they will be telling us the good news of Jesus as well. We just finished our round of our ladies' ministries, Christmas luncheons. I know that Pastor Kitty and myself look forward to this every year because we know we're going to eat well. But we always eat well here at St. Matthew. But we get to spend some time with the ladies in a more relaxed setting. And it is a joy for both of us to be able to do that and spend time with the ladies at their Christmas luncheon. And tomorrow, there's even something that we have done for many years here at St. Matthew as we prepare for Christmas. And that's the Ladies' Evening Guild's cookie walk. And I was just telling one of the ladies that, that she didn't bring any cookies in here. They left them all over there. And I told her, what am I supposed to do during the sermon? I suppose I should preach then. But I'm looking forward to the cookie walk tomorrow as well. All of these things, however, they're fun. They're joyous. They're preparations for Christmas. But you know what? All of these things and everything else that we do here at St. Matthew is a lot like John the Baptist. They prepare. They prepare us to share the good news that Jesus is coming. We can invite friends. We can invite neighbors and family to all these different events so that we can tell them this is what we are about here at St. Matthew. I know it may seem like what we're about here at St. Matthew is eating, but really what we are about is telling people about Jesus, who has come to save us sinners from our sins through his death and resurrection. It just so happens we do it over a dinner table most of the time. And so like John the Baptist, we want to tell other people about Jesus. And like John the Baptist, it begins with our own baptism. When we start our lives in God's kingdom, becoming a child of God in the waters of holy baptism, we are on that path of telling others that Jesus has come and will come again someday. And connected to baptism is confirmation, our catechism classes, where we continue to not only live in our baptismal grace, but we are learning and in our learning, we are also learning how to teach other people about Jesus. So we're in instruction, 
We are in Bible study. We are in personal and daily devotions. And if you're not doing that, I encourage you to do that. You don't have to come to my Bible study. We've got others. You just should be touching God's Word and bringing it into your hearts on a regular basis. Devotions, too. What do we have for devotions around here? We've got plenty of opportunities for devotional time together and personal devotions. Two weeks away from Christmas, it's not too late to start. For example, our Lutheran Hour Ministry devotions are available in the church office. And even though we have already been in this for two weeks, you can start now and, and start to prepare for that coming of the Nativity, but also the Second Coming of Christ. There are other devotional resources as well. There's also another way to prepare. Worship. You're doing that right now, so keep it up. Keep going to church, coming to worship with brothers and sisters in Christ. And then go to a Bible study this week. All the Bible studies meet this week. The men's study met this morning. The ladies meet Tuesday night and Thursday morning. Tim Hetzner's Bible class meets Monday morning, Monday evening. So you have opportunities. The men's Bible study, by the way, today is available on Facebook right now. On my Facebook page, we did about an hour and 15 minutes worth. We broadcast it live. You can watch it again and watch. You'll get an excellent primer, not only in Job chapter 13, but also how the Supreme Court works. You believe that? That's what we talked about in Bible class, how the Supreme Court works. Those of you who are lawyers, I'm sure you all know how that works, but we had a lawyer in class, and so he had to tell us, because we were talking about how Job wants to argue his case before God. It's like a lawyer arguing a case before the Supreme Court. These are opportunities for all of you to begin, to make a good beginning right now, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is the beginning of your new life in Jesus Christ. So let's begin together today. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your Son, Jesus, who has come, is here now in word and sacrament, and will come again. Help us to be ready by telling other people the good news, that Jesus is our Savior, our loving Savior, who died and rose again to save all people from their sins. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.